Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator, and today we're talking a, bit, a little bit of advanced stuff with GUIs. We're talking about how to add custom information to a GUI event in AutoHotKey, and this is when you have a, a button like in a GUI, and when you press it, you want to add some additional parameters to wherever you're going there, right, to call it. Stick around because we're going to discuss default hidden parameters that are already sent, and then how to add your own. Exactly. So this came from a question in one of the previous videos we have sent. And he was talking about that he has a G label, which is, or a function that when you click a button, it goes ahead and uh, performs an action. And this is really common whenever you are doing GUI stuff. And so let me share my screen for a second, and I will show you what that looks like and what are we trying to do. I should add, this is, you know, we have this covered in our intro to GUIs course where we're adding it just because of the question. It's a good question, but it is a very good question. And it is something that even though in the concept is simple, but doing it in our hotkey version one specifically is a little bit trickier than you might think. So here's the situation. You have a button which has a label and this label, instead of being a label by itself, you are using a function. Now, if you're just using a label, the labels are global which means that you can have variables anywhere and the label can access them. So you don't have to pass parameters. You just use global variables. If you don't want to be dealing with global variables, you would use a function like this. This is what I usually do. And basically there's four parameters that are passed by default. I actually, by, by default, the first three parameters are not optional. They're always being passed when you click the button but I'm making them optional because of something that I'm gonna show in a second. So right now, if you click this button, you will have this message box and this P1 here is empty because that's actually the problem. This is what he was mentioning. Okay, this is a normal function. What if I want to pass an additional parameter? This is where it gets tricky. Okay, so I have a, a P1 parameter one. So these four are being passed by AutoHotKey automatically but I want to pass a fourth, uh, fifth parameter in this case. How do I do that? That is a simple question with a very complex answer because now what you would have to do is what is called binding a function. And this is something that is not uh, discussed very often, but let me just do this. Let's just add this code here and let me explain it which is a very simple uh, concept. In our hotkey version one, functions, which is for example, the show text function, is just that, it's a function, right? But sometimes you might want to do some special things with functions and you want to convert them into an object. And one of the special things that you want to do is bind them. Now, once you create, you use this, special function called func with show text, what it does is that it, you can store now a special type of object that now you can call. Once you do that, the way to call the function is by using it as a variable like this. So the variable show has a function in it. So you use it as a variable to call that function. That's what you're, it's a weird thing to do but let me explain why would I do this. In certain situations, I want to bind an additional parameter. So I have one, two, three, four parameters, which are these four. And now the fifth parameter, I want to bind data in it that even if I don't pass any parameters to it, that data is gonna be sent, which is, a weird concept. It is not something that we do very often. And that's why it is so weird. Notice that now when I run the script, now P1 has a value, is the value that I'm binding to it. So why would I want to do this? Again, adding or passing parameters to a GUI is not as easy as it looks. If I use the G label, I cannot pass parameters to it. But if I bound the function like this, then I can do a little trick, which is using GUI control to use a bound function. So I don't need the G label any longer. 
here. I don't need it. I will use GUI control to modify my OK button. And what I'm going to modify in this case is adding a G label, a special G label. And this special G label that I'm passing is my bound function, which means I'm calling the show text function with the fifth parameter already set into it. And that's what this variable represents. It's just the function with an additional parameter. And I'm using GUI control to do that for me. Now, by doing this kind of weirdness is how I would call it, um, then now you have this variable being passed to it. It's a, a little bit of a mouthful. Is you're, you're binding a function to add it to the G label via GUI control is very complex. Um, sometimes I myself would just have an additional function that calls my function. It's so weird. Um, my show text, in best, instead of doing the parameter, I would just have a secondary parameter, uh, a secondary function that would just do what I want. And my show text is just going to call that one however I want to call it, you know? So again, really tricky, really messy, but that is in V in V1. In V2, it's actually pretty simple because in V2, all functions are objects by default. That's what is going on. So in V2, this is the code that I had for V2 as an example. You create your GUI, right? You add your button, and in the on event, you just grab your show text as we had it and just bind it right there. That's it. And you just show your GUI. Now, my show text function in V2, instead of four parameters, they only get two, an object and info. So I just want to bind the last parameter. That's what I'm doing here. You can do it in one line. You don't have to use GUI control. You don't have to to add, uh, you know, bound functions in, the, in one line and GUI control in another. It's just done in one line. When you run this code, it would behave exactly as we had before. And it's less code and it is cleaner. So that's the reason for me that a lot of people think V2 is more complex and they have to learn a, a, a few things. But I would say the reason why V2 came around is to make simpler a lot of little details that probably you haven't heard about it because you don't deal that much with GUIs. But this arguably is easier for me to learn than the well, GUI control, you know, like all yeah. the other things that I have to do. Once you understand objects, it becomes much simpler, right, to, to follow. Right. So, and we do have an objects course. I'll put the URL up here if you're new to objects and classes, but it, it really makes things like that example it's a great example much clearer I, i'd love if people chime in here does something like this get you interested in starting v2 comment below if you know you're interested we have a lot of videos i'll, I'll put a link to v2 also in here as well of um a lot of different things on how to convert over to v2 um but it's once you grasp objects in classes it's man like that's a great example of why it's so much simpler so thanks for watching, and uh, please like the video if you learned something. It really helps us out. And then don't forget to subscribe. We're the largest auto hockey channel out there, and we regularly create really good, solid videos. Cheers.